Since you started back in 2009, how would you say prepped meals have changed between then and now? That's an interesting question. In 2009, there were no prep meals available for sale. You either did it yourself or you just weren't prepared. Nowadays, prep meals are everywhere. I've even seen them for sale in 7-Eleven. Long ago, the only people you'd see with prepared meals are people who go on stage or compete. Nowadays, you'll see anyone with prepared meals. Because if you're not prepared, you can end up at a fast food drive through And we all know what that leads to gonna gain a couple extra pounds. The majority of people are realizing that if you already have your meals prepared, ready to go and eat, you're not gonna make bad decisions on the fly. More and more people are becoming health conscious, so they're phasing out all the fast food that they're eating. You can get a prepared meal for less than $10, which is cheaper than fast food. It's the way to go. While prepared meals have evolved from plain grilled chicken to steamed broccoli, become more colorful and flavorful, Healthy Meals Direct still adheres to the core fundamentals of lean proteins, complex carbohydrates. Should prepped meals be frozen? And if so, does it affect the nutrients? Well, when it comes to macronutrients, your fats, your carbs, and your protein, those you can freeze without it affecting its nutritional value. When it comes to fruits and vegetables, the nutritional value is affected. Most of the time with prep meals, you receive them all at once, whether you're making them yourself on meal prep Sunday or if you get them delivered from a meal prep company. So some of them are gonna have to go in the freezer. You just have to be smart about what you put in the freezer. Let me give you some example. Say it's meal prep Sunday, and you grill up a bunch of chicken, you cook your brown rice, your sweet potato fries, whatever you're making. You could have turkey chili, large batch, and you portion it all. So you have your meals Monday through Sunday. So the food's not gonna last all week. So you're gonna wanna put some of that in the freezer. Macronutrients freeze, no problem. When you take them out the freezer, make sure you don't just throw them right in the microwave. Allow it to defrost first, and then you'll reheat it. When it comes to micronutrients, your vegetable and stuff like that, I showed you how to make them on the spot in a previous video so you can add that to your prepared meals. A lot of people get skeeved out by anything that's frozen because they're confusing it with the frozen freezer aisle, which is food full of preservatives and in some cases been frozen for over a year. When you have prepared meals and you make them on Sunday and you're freezing your second half of the week's food, you're simply just using low temperature as a preservative by slowing down bacteria so that it lasts for the rest of the week. Lots of very muscular bodybuilders promote prepped meal companies. Can you get bodybuilder muscles from prepped meals? That's another great question, and the answer is yes and no. You have to understand that professional bodybuilders, or even some amateur bodybuilders that are very well muscled, there's a lot of attention pointed at them, so no matter what they're claiming that they're using to achieve such a muscular physique is going to be believed by a gullible audience. So my answer is no, you're not going to eat small prepared meals and get 20 inch biceps. And it's unfortunate that a lot of the younger people look up to the bodybuilders who are promoting uh, prepared meals and they have the expectations to achieve such a physique and it's simply just not possible. What's the importance of meal timing? Meal timing is very important and your normal functioning body digestions every three to four hours. So you want to make sure that you're ingesting nutrients every three to four hours. This shows your body that you're not starving and your body will become more efficient at turning over calories. How important is portion control? Portion control is everything. It's just as important as meal timing. In fact, they work hand in hand. You want to eat the right amount of food every three to four hours. This way your body's not gonna feel the need to store any fat, or if you have any to lose, it'll be comfortable letting it go because it's seeing adequate nutrition come in on a regular basis. How important is it to count every single calorie, and does everyone need their own unique amount of calories in order to lose weight? That's a good question. Um, does everyone need their own unique amount of calories to lose weight? That's yes and no. When it comes to counting every single calorie, and being meticulous about it, this is what causes people to give up prematurely before they reach their goal. You shouldn't be counting every single calorie. You wanna stay in a caloric range with a give or take 50 calories. It's not that important if uh, you're supposed to have a target of 400 calories a meal, but you end up having 430, and it works the other way. If you're supposed to have 400 calories a meal and you end up at 370, that's okay. Another thing, there's information that's put out there that'll really confuse and frustrate people, and it is that every single human has their own caloric needs. So if you have a male who, let's say, is six foot 250 pounds, and you have another male that's six foot 225 pounds, they both have a goal weight of 200. So someone might say that they both need two totally different diets. 
They could both be on the same exact diet with the same amount of calories and still achieve their goal. Let's remember, it's not the overall body weight that determines how many calories someone needs. It's your lean body mass, which means it's the man underneath the extra fat that's on the body or a woman, it works for both genders. I'll give you another example. We have a weight loss strategy for women. It revolves around a 1200 calorie diet. So you could have someone who's five foot three, 160 pounds, or someone else who's five foot seven, 200 pounds. They can both do the same diet and they can both lose weight on it. With regards to weight loss, how important is it to exercise? Exercise is very important. There's a lot of information out there that says that when it comes to weight loss, your diet is 80% of it and your exercise is only 20% of it. Or I've even heard uh, your diet's 90% of the equation and exercise is only 10. Let's remember that our muscle is our metabolism. So the healthier our muscle tissue is, the more calories we'll turn over. Now I'm not talking building big muscles. I'm just talking about efficient muscles that are used. When you exercise on a regular basis and you develop healthy muscle tissue, everything you do, you're gonna be turning over more calories. You could be performing your normal job duties. You could be walking to your car. You could be grocery shopping, but because your body has healthy muscle tissue, you're gonna be turning over more calories. So we shouldn't minimize exercise and give diet the front lead. We should give equal attention to both. Well, thank you for answering our questions. If anyone watching has any questions, how can they go about getting them answered? Oh yeah, sure. If you guys have any questions, just ask them in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Great, thank you so much. No problem.